Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are continuing our tip number three in our prevention series today. And uh, I'm just speaking about the, the spark plug. What is the importance of spark plugs? Uh, why do they need to function? What is their function? And what you should look out for um, when it comes to, um, to spark plugs maybe malfunctioning or actually failing completely. So uh, the spark plugs are basically most vehicles have got uh, uh, something that generates a spark which is called a coil and that sends a, a, a very strong pulse or current to, uh, through these leads here to the spark plug inside the engine and uh, that's how your, your, spark is, your spark plug basically gets the, the ability to, to generate that spark it's a very high voltage so you don't always want to touch on these uh, plug wires you can get quite a shock and uh, you may survive or you may not but uh, in most cases you will uh, but um, yeah um, just make sure that uh, when you're dealing with spark plugs and the vehicle is on that you insulate yourself the first thing you want to have a look at is actually inspecting your spark plug wires just have a look at them uh, these ones are new uh, these are bogies uh, bogey cord uh, uh, spark plug wires they are uh, very good wires and um, they last very long um, it's important to inspect these wires because what happens is the this wire can actually cause a spark if this uh, if this outer insulation becomes corroded like it becomes cracked with a cut in it and you won't even see it it will actually cause that there they actually becomes a spark between the engine itself between the body of the engine and actually the wire and you won't be able to see it maybe at night if you if you actually start the engine at night and it's dark you might actually be able to see that um, many times you'll find that you'll find that this plug wire actually what it does is it actually uh, throws the spark away as they say so it arcs between the the uh, this metal housing here or this metal spring and the body and that's also a sign that you need to start changing your your, your plug wires um, as you can see at the bottom we've got the spark plug always make sure your spark plugs are turned in in the proper way normally just tighten and then another quarter turn so you don't want to over tighten those spark plugs and never take them out when the engine is hot wait until the engine is completely cooled down and then remove the spark plugs So as you can see, I've got the uh, NGK spark plugs here. Once again, this is not sponsored by NGK. I don't have any affiliation with NGK. I just prefer to use the brand because uh, I've always gotten, uh, I always receive good success or good results with NGK. Um, but this is the, uh, the spark plug that you'd buy in the shop. And once again, as I've said in my other videos, uh, guys, please refer to your, to your manual of your vehicle or make sure that when you go to the spare shop that you actually take with a picture of your vehicle model number how it looks even if you can take out the old take out the spark plug um, and see what is the number on the spark plug if you, if you look you'll see on the box there's a number which is this one here that you'll see it's a let's just focus yeah there we go there's always a number on the box and if you look inside on the spark plug itself you'll see there's a number printed on the side here we go there's a number from pp there will be some number printed on the side and that is how you'll know what the spark plug uh, uh, number is so take that go to the spear shop take a picture of a vehicle with and give them the year model all of that and they'll be able to do, tell you exactly what spark plugs you're going to need And it's important to change the spark plug because even a spark plug is not something that you'll notice but you'll just feel maybe there's a mist on the vehicle or it, it hesitates and if you look at the spark plug looks in order looks fine but when you take it out and inspect it you're gonna find it's cracked so that's what can happen to your spark plug spark plugs crack and this can be from over tightening it can also be from engine heat it can be from a number of things um, but this does happen and once it happens the spark plugs finish and you really need to change it so on the spark plug you will notice that if you look at this spark plug there's a top electrode over here and then we've got the bottom electrode now what happens is the spark is generated between the two current goes through and uh, the, the outside is the earth and then the the spark basically comes from the spark wire from the coil to the spark wire to the spark plug which is attached at the bottom here and then comes through 
and then the resulting action is a spark in between these two electrodes here so what's very important about this electrode is this gap in between each vehicle each manufacturer has got their own their own gap there has to be a gap the gap has to be a certain size and each vehicle has got its own its own size of gap now to determine that you're going to need to get a feeler gauge so generally what will happen is when you buy your spark plug the gap should be preset but it's best to just have a look and check to make sure check what is your manufacturer specification what do they say what should be the gap very easy to find this it's on the internet you can go to NGK's or champions websites and you'll find that on the website there you'll find the various makes and models of vehicles also what the recommended spark plug is and also the gap for that spark plug so once you've got your your feeler gauge uh, in this case the spark plug gap is 0 0.8 and we're gonna just check it by putting the uh, feeler gauge in between and yeah feels actually right that's that's perfect so what you want is when you pull it out What you really want is when you pull it out, you want that there must be a little bit of drag. It mustn't just pull out, it mustn't be easy. And that's the way you determine. There we go, that's what you want. That is the correct spark plug gap. So use a feeler gauge guys and you'll set your gaps like that. So um, yeah, so that, that's uh, the long and short of spark plugs. I can go into much deeper um, analysis of spark plugs, but I'm not going to do that because this is not about the technical details of the spark plug. This is just about you being in a position to go to the spare shop, to, to go and find the correct uh, uh, spark plug when you're doing your service on your vehicle. You know, we've covered the oil, we're now covering the spark plugs, we've covered the coolant. So this is to put you in a position to go to the, to the actual spare shop and say, listen, I need this the spark plug and to actually to know what what you are talking about not going in there blind and, and just taking what they give you because yes sometimes spare shops even give you the wrong the wrong plugs they give you the wrong things and that's only because you didn't come there with the right inf information now that we've discussed the importance of spark plugs and gone over all the, the various uh, uh, things that you need to check on your spark plugs we're going to discuss and we're going to speak about yes you guessed it air filters one of the most vital parts of the of the fuel system believe it or not is your air filter because your air filter really controls the quality of the air that goes into your engine because if you have a look at it you've got the inlet pipe for your air at the bottom here and that goes into your filter box in which the air is then filtered all the sand is taken out all the dust is taken out and and from there it proceeds all the way along into your inlet manifold and it passes your throttle body and then all the way into the inlet manifold into the engine so if you letting firstly bad quality air come in because you've got a blocked up air filter you're gonna start running the risk of the vehicle interpreting this uh, in a certain way and this is in the in this interpretation is done by the ECU there are sensors as you can see all around the engine there are sensors various sensors which control the amount of E and it tells the computer how much fuel to give to the actual engine now if you have a blocked up air filter what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get bad quality ears I've said and you're going to get incorrect reading on your ECU and that's going to mean that you might start, start using more fuel on your vehicle and that's definitely not something that you want to have. We're going to be discussing the sensors in the uh, uh, next video. Um, we've got your air idle sensor on the top and you've got your mass airflow sensor on the other side. That is the one that tells the computer how much air is actually coming into this engine. Very, very sensitive unit. Uh, needs to be cleaned in a specific way. And uh, as well as your uh, idle air sensor. All these sensors are very, very important on the engine. And we're going to go into a long discussion about that in the next video. 
So now let's go and have a look. We're going to open up the earbox and we're going to have a look inside and see uh, how to change out the ear filter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen up this pipe. So uh, generally what I do is I, I loosen this, I loosen this whole unit, take off this pipe, unscrew the whole box, take the whole thing out normally. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to try and do it the, the most simplest way, uh, which is to loosen up your screws on the one pipe here. We're going to loosen up this one, we're going to remove this pipe, and then we're just going to unscrew the four screws that actually hold this box in place here. Something that's very important is to check that the clamps are tight on these on these ear pipes over here. Also, you're going to inspect this ear pipe to make sure there's no cracks or holes or anything in it like that. Generally, it doesn't happen, but always a good idea now that you are here doing it, taking it off, just inspect the pipe. Yeah, this pipe looks like it's in order. Everything looks intact. Looks like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Always inspect around the edges of the pipe for any cracks. But this one seems to be okay. Some of you have uh, asked me questions about uh, my screwdriver that I use. As you can see, I've had the screwdriver for years. Uh, it's actually one of the best uh, screwdrivers, I think, that's out there. The torque on this thing is phenomenal. Um, the battery uh, lifespan on it is very long. Um, but it's a good tool to use on generally almost everything that I do. Um, but on engines, what I like about it, it's not so strong that it will strip out the screw and it's not weak that it won't be able to loosen something. So it's a very, very good uh, uh, screwdriver to have, a cordless screwdriver. Um, also, it makes things much easier when you're loosening screws, it's going to save you a bit of time. That's, that's how it comes off. Uh, it's got two clips that clip in at the back, so when you're going to put it back in, you just clip it back in and you push it down, make sure that it's properly secured. But that, it comes out that easy. Here we have our old air filter. As you can see, it's not clean. It's not very clean. Uh, yeah, it's got a lot of dust on it. And you'd be amazed how much dust these air filters actually accumulate. If you look in between, you'll see all of the, the dirt that's stuck in there. This one is still in good condition compared to some that I've taken out of other vehicles. People haven't changed them for five years. And, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it sounds impossible, but that's exactly what happens. So yeah, that's the old filter and now we'll install the new one. So before installing, I'm just going to blow this out. Uh, what you can do is you can vacuum it out. But I just take my blower and I blow it out. But before I do that, I just make sure that I'm going to close up the throttle body and then I can blow it out uh, quite easily without getting any dirt inside the throttle body. So now that we've cleaned out everything, time to reinstall our new air filter. As you can see, this one looks nice and shiny. Um, when you're going, as I've said before in my other videos, when you're going to the spare shop, take the old filter with you, unless you really are familiar with it. If you're not sure what it is, take the filter with you. Uh, take a picture of your vehicle, your model number, all of those things. Take it with to the spare shop so that, so that you get an exact, the exact right thing when you are, when you are the so the last thing you want is to say that you've got this air filter on that vehicle and they give you the wrong thing. So, our air filter is installed. All we need to do now is just to put back the 
the cover and then we're done. Guys, when reinstalling this pipe, you'll notice there's like a little uh, a little notch here, and on the top of the cover there's a notch as well. So all you need to know is that those two notches need to be aligned. It might take a little bit of force to get this pipe in. Make sure your clamp is at the top, and on he goes. It's that simple. Same on the other side. Guys, that's it. That's all that needs to be done, and your air fault has changed. We've come to the the end of our of our uh, tutorial today with regards to spark plugs and air filters. Um, once again, yes, just trying to get everybody to be able to do the simple things on their vehicles. Um, as you can see, this was two things that was very simple to do, but will make a huge difference in the performance of your vehicle. Just a quick teaser, in our next episode we're going to be discussing the importance of the radiator in the engine. It's uh, another part of the cooling system that we're going to be discussing. And also, you know, how to maintain and how to have a look at uh, what's, uh, what the condition of your radiator is. You know, most radiators are in good condition. If you look at this one, it's in perfect condition. So, you know, let's have a closer look and see that... Oh. Okay, well this radiator has seen its, it's, seen its days and uh, it's seen better days at least. And, uh, but we'll be discussing radiators in the next uh, episode, so uh, guys, uh, stay tuned for that. So thank you guys for watching and um, please remember to uh, comment, please remember to like and share and subscribe to my channel. Um, you'll find me on YouTube Solve It. Your support is appreciated and uh, I really appreciate your questions guys and your comments. Um, so please keep them coming and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.